Okay, are you ready to begin Report 8761? Remember, this is a report that's a continuation of Report 8660 introduced in Lesson 86. We'll be sure that you open the correct document to begin work on it. But before that, read through the copy to make sure you understand the application of the proofreader's marks. We're talking about page 354 in your textbook is where it begins. This report today is filled with lots and lots of things that may be either new or review from the past for you. It includes an enumerated list and footnotes. It has two tables in the report. You should not type the footnote numbers. It is automatically inserted by Word. And if you format the report correctly, Table 1 should appear at the top of page 4, and Table 2 should be preceded and followed by a blank line. I'm going to be reminding you to indent the quoted paragraph on page 5 from both the left and the right margins and apply styles as appropriate after you've finished typing the report pages in this lesson. Remember when you're done to spell check, proofread, and preview your document as you go. All right, let's start work. Notice this time that it says start work. It opens the starting file for this document and it's not going to be a blank one. Okay, look here at the top of the page. It says 8660S. It is the saved report 8660 that you completed in the last lesson, but we're going to pick it up and carry on at this point. It will be saved in the slot in GDP for 8761, so don't get confused by the names of the files. We have our checklist over here on the right, and the first thing we're going to do after the last paragraph is press Enter one time turn on caps lock and type the side heading. Press enter one time and then I am going to fill in the paragraph, the list, and the following paragraph all at once. After the last one we're going to be inserting a footnote but before that we're going to come up here, select our list and click numbering which starts a numbered list. Okay next thing is to place your cursor right after the period in the last paragraph. We are going to go to the References tab, which opens the ribbon. There is a footnotes group. We're going to click Insert Footnote. Be sure that you get footnotes and not endnotes. Then you are immediately taken to the bottom of the page where you're going to type your footnote information. All right, picking up with our footnote, I want to point out that you need to italicize the journal or magazine title. Control I will do that. Proofread your footnote. Needed to add a capital letter on the name there. And then you're ready to go back up and continue your report. In your textbook, it will be page 355. After the footnote, press Enter one time and type the side heading, Seminar Content. Press Enter one time and begin the next paragraph. All right, here are all three paragraphs before the first table, and I do want to point out that some students have trouble reading the handwriting for the proofreader's marks here for MIT, but that is what the letters are. MIT should all be capital letters. After the third paragraph in this section, Seminar Content, press Enter twice and we're going to insert our first table. After styles are applied, this table will more than likely begin on the next page, but for now we will just insert it right here so that our line spacing is correct. We're going to move to the Insert tab and insert a table, three columns, and 12 rows. We will merge the first row for our title block we will turn on bold and center. Table in Table 1 is not in all caps, but then you can turn all caps on for largest international companies. Press Enter one time and type the subtitle. Press Enter one time because we need a blank line under the title block. Now don't worry how this is looking right now. 
once the table is all formatted and the styles are added, I think you'll find that the formatting is correct. We need to go back and increase the title font size to 14. Then move to the next row, select Bold, and Center for the column headings. After filling in the rest of the cells with the information on page 355, we need to right align the number column. So I've selected that, move up to the ribbon, and click Align Text Right. The next step is to auto fit the table. So click, right click anywhere in the table, click Auto Fit to Contents, then select the table as a whole. We're going to center it horizontally on the page. And because this is in a report, remember we will not be centering it vertically. It is not on a page by itself. Here is this table finished and we're ready to move on to the next paragraph. We need a blank line after the table, so press enter one more time. At the end of this paragraph, we are ready for our next footnote. Move to the References tab, click Insert Footnote. Notice it is number 2 automatically. So you are at the bottom of the page, you can type in that information. In this footnote, always be careful to apply italics to the right title. This is a book, so it applies to the dynamics of intercultural seminars. And then notice on the insertion that you are asked to insert a comma and page 42 before the period after 2009. So this is how it will look when finished. We're now ready for the next table on the page. So after the footnote, press Enter two times, and we're going to insert our next table. This one is going to have two columns and ten rows. Merge the first column. Apply Bold and Center. Press Enter for a blank line after the title, then go back to select the title and increase the font size to 14. This table does not have a subtitle, so the blank line follows the title directly. Select the next row, apply Bold and Center, and we're ready to fill in the rest of the information on this table. Okay, since this is a combination of numbers and text, you do not need to write a line this time, but we're going to apply Auto Fit. So right click in the table, apply Auto Fit to Contents, select the entire table, and center it. Insert a blank line after the table, and now we are ready for paragraph headings. Paragraph headings are typed normally in bold and followed by a period. There is no indention involved. But since we are going to apply a style to these paragraphs, we will not apply bold until we find out what that paragraph style is going to do. So go ahead and type body positions and movements, period, space, and begin the rest of the paragraph. Now here I am demonstrating because we have another dash. This has come up before, but dashes are typed by striking the hyphen key twice with no space before or after. And after you type the following word and space, Word converts that into a long dash or an M dash. After the following paragraph that also has a paragraph heading, Concepts of Culture, we are ready for our long quotation. This is sometimes called a block quote it is indented a half inch from both margins. So press enter twice so that we have a blank line before that long quote. Then just type it in and we will apply the formatting afterward. All right, I have typed the content of that block quote. I'm going to press enter twice, paste in the next paragraph. Then we're going to go back to this quote, select the entire thing, move to the paragraph dialog box and under indention we are going to increase left to 0.5 which is a half inch and right to 0.5 which is a half inch. Click OK. Notice the change. 
that is properly formatted. Now we do have a footnote to insert, so place your insertion point immediately after the period. Move to the References tab, click Insert Footnote. You will see we are in number 3 at this point. I am pausing here in this footnote to demonstrate how we're going to treat the hyperlink. Actually, it's a URL and not a hyperlink. We do not want it to be converted to one. You insert the left caret, the caret on the right, comma, and you see that it is converted to a hyperlink. We do not want it to be a hyperlink, so press undo or control Z and you get your typing back. If this converts on you and you don't notice it, you're going to have to come back and fix it. Remove the hyperlink and reinsert those carrots on each side of the URL. Alright, there is n nothing italicized in this footnote. We have a title of the website or an article on the website in quotes only. After finishing that footnote, we find that we are finished for this time except for applying the styles. We apply the styles as the last step. This time we are looking for the side headings. We're going to apply heading 2 style and the paragraph headings apply heading 3. So let's move back up to where we began this report, the instructional approach. So select that row, apply heading 2, See how that jumps it right onto page 3, so we're doing fine there as far as formatting. Seminar content, heading 2, and this did not bump our table onto page 2, so I'm going to insert a manual page break by pressing Control enter so that now table 1 begins on page 4. You may or may not have to do this step but if you do, you have just seen it demonstrated. Okay, our first paragraph heading is Body Positions and Movements. So select Through the Period and apply in the gallery Heading 3. Concept of Culture and Heading 3. There will be some more paragraph headings in the following sections of the report, but as the checklist indicates, this is all for this one. Save your document. This is very important this time that you go to your safe location. Notice how it is being saved, 8660S. This is the file that you're going to upload into 8761. So just take note of that, save it, move to the screen where you can browse for that file and upload it. Here we have Report 8660S, submit your work, and they did warn you that it may take several minutes to score this document over here on the left. As long as the clock keeps going around, they are working on storing that four-page document, four or five. Okay, I have two errors. So I'm going to scroll through to look for red, green, or blue markings. This is one that is excusable. This blue paragraph mark indicates the page break that I inserted. They're considering that an error, but it was not an error. Be aware that I would disregard that error in GDP. You don't have to worry about that one. Okay, it looks like I need a space after P period in my second footnote. So I'm going to fix that one by clicking Edit My Work. I'm going to move to footnote 2, insert a space in the page number, save again. This time it has a 1 after the S. So to get the corrections, we're going to have to be sure that we submit the right document. Alright, the one error that we see here is the page break that I inserted. If you have to insert a page break, it's going to be counted as an error, so don't worry about it. I will not count it against you. 
All right, once you have corrected your errors to zero, you are finished with this section, and I'll see you again in Lesson 88.